Our next enshrinee has one of the greatest collections of hardware that I've ever seen. When she brought her world championship medals down for the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame, I was just overwhelmed. But when you think about what each one of those medals represents and the stories that come along with it, it's a wonderful and astounding story, one that it's taken a long time to get our next enshrinee inducted in the Hall of Fame simply because she wasn't a household name, because she was involved in a sport that wasn't maybe the most recognized by the media. But when you read the profile and the accomplishments of Margaret Thompson Murdoch, Olympic silver medalist in rifle shooting, and this wasn't when they differentiated between men and women, seven individual world championships, five Pan Am Gold Championships, 28 American National Championships, 13 world records. She was the first woman to letter in any sport at Kansas State University. She's been inducted into numerous national halls of fame and international halls of fame, including the U.S. Shooting Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce from Hayden High School out of Topeka and Kansas State University, Margaret Thompson Murdoch. Margaret. I'd like to say thank you to the Kansas State Hall of Fame that is having me have my name and a great important part of my life be associated with the great, great athletes that I've always heard about from Kansas and now I can say I am with those people and one of them. Another person I'd really like to thank is Jim Ryan who nominated me to this Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. And I assure you, I probably wouldn't have gotten up here if he hadn't have done that for me as a fellow Olympian and also a member of the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. As, all, as you've heard from the other two athletes up here, and I think you're going to hear it from everybody else, the most loyal fans you have are your family, and they support you 100%, and that was the case with me. I owe an awful lot to my mother and father to be able to do the shooting things that I accomplished me. They supported me in every way and did everything they could to help me along the way. My dad taught me how to shoot when I was really too little to even remember when I started. And then I started competitively when I was 11. And my mother did a lot of things. She uh, came along as a chaperone when that was required so I could just go on overnight trips with a team. She babysat for me later in life. Um, made sure I had food to go so I could eat at these things, dry clothes, which in shooting can be a real problem some days, and she helped a lot. I owe them really everything. My dad also, besides uh, teaching me to shoot, had three friends at the Capital City Rifle Club in Topeka, Kansas, uh, Jim Wilson, J.B. Hart, and Stanley's Hart, his son, and these four men started a junior division in the rifle club there, and they ran that for about 20, 25 years and taught, I have no idea how many juniors, firearm safety and the essentials of competitive rifle shooting. And my sister and I were the only two girls who did that for some time. However, I'm glad to report that by the end of that time, it was almost all girls. <laughs> so and my dad really enjoyed teaching them and having them be a team to compete from that club. My next uh, thing that I did in my life after I got out of the Junior Rifle Club in Topeka was I uh, chose the university I wanted to go to because they had a good rifle team. And that was Kansas State University. They had a number of All-Americans and I wanted to go to there to shoot on their rifle team, so I went to K-State. I was disappointed when I was a freshman when I showed up at the range and found out that no, I was not going to get to shoot with the rifle team because I was a girl. And uh, this really hurt, but uh, I asked if I could practice on the range with them because uh, it's not easy to find some place to practice shooting. You know, it's gotta be a built range. They said, yeah, that'd be fine, I could come down. So I was down there every day shooting. 
And uh, then my sophomore year, the All-Americans that they had graduated. And it didn't take too long that sophomore year for me to be shooting the same scores as everybody else on the rifle team. And it was very fortunate of me and outstanding for some of the men in the ROTC department to take a stand and say, we can have a girl on our team. We can do that. She's a good enough shooter. And so our coach, Sergeant Lancaster, uh, and our OIC, uh, he was at that time a, a captain, Charles Nelson, and went to the PMS, or the Professor of Military Science at K-State, Tom Badger, and they agreed that I could shoot on the K-State rifle team if my mother came along as chaperone when we went to the out-of-town out of overnight matches. So I got a good start there. I had a lot of fun shooting with the K-State team, and I'm proud to tell you today that um, when I asked them to come and, and gave them the invitations, all of them that I shot with, and including uh, now retired Colonel uh, Charles Nelson, the OIC, have come back from all across the country to spend this very special evening with me. Um, then after uh, I got out of K-State, at that time, the only way that anyone that wanted to continue shooting past the university level, you had to join the Army. There just simply was no other way. There was no help from Olympic Committee. There was no program out in Colorado Springs. The only way you could shoot was to join the Army. So I did that. I just put up my little right hand and went right in. And I was assigned to the United States Army Marksmanship Unit at Fort Benning, Georgia. And it was a thrill, a life's dream to really get to go down there and be a part of that unit. And just like the K-State people, everybody at that unit, and the, the permanent assignment people there, I'm saying there was about 200 people there all the time. In the summer, it would grow maybe by another six or 800 people. But in the winter, those people did everything they could to help every shooter, and including me, be the very best shooter that we could possibly become. That unit, really had a close tie to Kansas because it was created in 1956 by our own then president, Dwight D. Eisenhower. And this was during the Cold War and our mission at that unit was to improve marksmanship and the showings that the United States people would present to the world in Olympic Pan Am Games and other international matches. We weren't doing very well before then, and he wanted us to be good Marks people. So that unit is still there. President Eisenhower knew how to do his paperwork. It's going to be there a long time in the future, too. And, at, it, you know, things change. So I can't tell you exactly today how it stands, but at the time I was shooting, this was a time from 1966 to 75, 76, uh, when I was doing international shooting, uh, the only Olympic sports that were winning more medals than the, the shooters from that unit for the United States were track and field and swimming. And we were number three in winning gold medals. We started winning in 1960, four years after President Eisenhower started that unit, and we kept winning. I heard one other Maury Screen say, making the U.S. team was the hard part, and it was expected you'd come home with the gold medals when you went to those games. And that turned out to be the very case with that marksmanship unit starting in 1960. We have a two weeks tryout. It is very, very hard to make the U.S. team because there's only two people get to go in shooting, uh, rifle shooting, okay? There are 17 events, but only two people get to go in rifle shooting. And that was the hard thing, was to make the team. And you knew when you went, your only competitor was really going to be that other U.S. shooter, and you were both going to come home with the gold and the silver medals. So I really appreciated all they did. It, it became my second family down there at Fort Benning. And uh, 
it was a wonderful, wonderful time in my life. So um, now, I was doing the fun part. There's two sides to everything. I was doing the shooting, loving it every second. But there weren't any other women out there. Very few. When I went to college, there were no women's sports. There was no women's sports in high school. Anywhere along the line. Well, my sister, who was older than I, she also was shooting in the Junior Rifle Club. Now, she didn't go as far as I did, as far as going to K-State and then joining the Army to shoot, but she kept shooting. And she then decided, she did well shooting too, she won some international medals, but she had the gift to be able to deal with politicians and to keep the paperwork straight, and she worked with, or was a member of President Ford's Commission on Olympic Sports and also worked with a Women's Sports Foundation until we got Title IX established so that women's sports could become a reality in high schools and colleges. So I owe her a very great deal too, not just my mother and dad. And it's for her loyal staying with me through all of this and working to have women in shooting that I want her to be the one to present my plaque tonight to me. She did a very good job. I went from no women in shooting to we now have women's events in the Olympics, the Pan Am Games, World Cup Games, and World Championships in all the shooting sports. That, that includes rifle, pistol, and shotgun, trap, and skeet. So, I really appreciate and love my sister. She's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a real honor to be here tonight and be inducted into the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you very much.